scheme because with Bitcoin, you can only do speculation. All right, bit of a translation hiccup there. Focus for decades on making transactions more efficient and secure worldwide. McCarley founded in 2017 Algorand or Algo, one of the main blockchain platforms in the world, which we're sorry, with which he assures solves scalability, security, and energy efficiency problems that have Bitcoin and other similar platforms in the crypto world. Bitcoin is not the technology that is going to make a real difference for the world, said McCarley in an interview with Telam and other media in which he recognized BTC the merit of having been the first to apply blockchain technology, but that does not mean that it stops being a centralized, dirty and insecure platform. Well, shots fired, but it is what it is, man. (laughs) I am a great defender of the power of blockchain and I believe that Bitcoin has the merit of being the first, but it is not the type of blockchain that I aspire for the world. It is not a platform that brings transparency and economic growth and opportunities for the whole of society, he said. In this sense, he added, with Bitcoin, you can only do speculation. I can only buy Bitcoin at the beginning of the year and later sell it and hope it will be at a higher price. McCarley charged against the low level of operations that the Bitcoin platform allows, barely 16 per second. That are too... That are too few if I want to use that network to buy bread or make financial transactions. The fact that only two mining pools control most of the emission and it's high demand for energy to run the supercomputers that keep the grid going around the world. Right. So he's talking about the issues, man, scalability, the environmental issues, the the centralization issues. I mean, it, it just is what it is, man. This is the opposite of decentralization. It is an extremely centralized network, very expensive, harmful to the environment and for only one asset. Bitcoin itself, so it is not the technology that is going to make a real difference for the world. Being a store of value at the end of the day is not enough, said McCarley. And he knows because he's part of the Intelligent Protocol family, and those tokens are going to lead the way into this this new, this brave new world, you know, this fourth industrial revolution. And Bitcoin is going to be let be left behind, man. <laughs> and that's that. Like, we just got to got to see it for what it is, man. Bitcoin, and in some some ways, Ethereum. They were the first, they did it big, but that's as far as it's going to go, man. The baton is going to have to be passed on. One year after the beginning of the global euphoria for cryptocurrencies, which led Bitcoin to triple its highest historical price and the crypto market as a whole to exceed $2.5 trillion of quotation, the entire mathematician assured not to be interested in it. Price of algo or that of BTC, but in the applications that will be given to the technology in the way in which people and companies carry out daily transactions in the world. I think you should be able to put all kinds of assets on a blockchain, such as financial, real estate, or all kinds of assets. But if you have a network with only one asset, as in the case of Bitcoin, you should not be surprised when it becomes a speculative game, he assured. Instead, Macaulay's, I hope I'm pronouncing this guy's name right, interest is that blockchain technology can provide infrastructure for economic development and streamline processes, processes that are now very expensive. 6% of global gross product goes into financial friction. It is too much. There is a great opportunity to improve. Visiting the region, Macaulay met this week in Uruguay with its president, Luis Lacal Pau, and with the head of government of the city of Buenos Aires, Horacio Rodriguez Loreto, with whom he spoke about the possibilities of applying blockchain technology in different government functionalities, just as the case of Colombia, where your health passport runs on the algorithm platform. The changes that these new technologies are bringing, such as the possibility of encrypting and individualizing assets of all kinds, from commodities to works of art, carrying out smart contracts for immediate settlement or assessing collateralized loans, are on the way to becoming common currency in the coming years. In this regard, he stated, I believe that the window of time that regulators have is not infinite because people want to carry out operations of this type, regardless of what the regulators say. And, well, they've already, the BIS already said their regulations are coming next year, globally. If nothing is done, what there will be is a bad blockchain is going to occupy that place and the problem for regulators is that in this case they will not have an office to close one of the changes that attracts McCurley the most is the possibility of making bi-directional payments through blockchain that is a single transaction in which the person who offers a good and whoever pays for it receives what they want in just seconds with a very low cost operation this is a very clear difference between unilateral or bi-directional payment Sorry, there is, sorry. At Algorand, I know that if I pay you something in 4.4 seconds, I will receive what I want to. Sorry about that, where was I? Um, right, I will receive what I wanted with a cost for the operation of a fraction of a cent. 
I can pay you in whatever you want, in dollars, in euros, or whatever you want. For this reason, it will be the payer who wants to access this type of services. Because with these, they can ensure that they will have what they pay for. Man, this guy, this guy knows what he's doing, man. Once this is understood, who would choose one-sided payments again? Asks a mathematician. Attracted by the multiple projects that were arriving from Argentina, Ricardo recently decided to invest in AgroToken, a local company that provides agricultural producers with the possibility of tokenized, digitalized, and unequivocally identify an asset on a blockchain. Their soy, wheat, and corn in order to be able to sell them when they want immediately in very small units, since each token represents one ton of each grain and can be divided into up to 10,000 parts. I fell in love with the vision, blah, blah, blah. Oh, wait, what's going on? Right, it looks like that's as far as it's going to translate. But that was a really good um, article, man. He said a lot, man. He said a lot, but these guys, they know, they know what's about to go down. I mean, damn, I'm, I feel like I'm missing out on a lot of good stuff. But this thing won't, it won't translate any further. Oh, there we go. Let me just double check. Right. Now, l listen to this, man. See, this guy knows what's about to go down. He said only 0.1% of the more than 15,000 cryptocurrencies and tokens in circulation around the world will survive in the coming years, according to Macaulay. And he knows that because he's an insider. In the midst of a boom in the crypto world with the issuance of new tokens linked to games, platforms of exchange, or even memes about pets or animals, Macaulay said that this world is experiencing a similar euphoria to what happened with the internet at the beginning of the 21st century. And that only the best platforms, the best and the chosen platforms, I should say, will be those that survive. The world does not need 10,000 blockchains, but I do not think this is a case in which the winner takes everything. It is always good to have alternatives and it is a good sign of development and that there is competition. But it can be 10 blockchains. Well, hold on. Didn't the, the CEO of FDX pretty much say the same thing? And these people are all insiders and they know what's about to go down, man. But it can be 10 blockchains at which at the most 20, those that make sense and want to be used to host applications there, said McCarty in a dialogue with Telem and other media. We are going to see a consolidation and many of them are going to disappear, he said. All right, so you get the point on that. He says, if we remember the beginning of the internet, there were many dot-com companies, but in the end, there were only a few companies like Microsoft or Google that continue to this day. It's interesting that those companies were not the first. <laughs> Do you remember AOL? They are companies that disappeared. Google was not the first, but it had better technology that today is of a great help for themselves and for the rest of the world, explained the Italian mathematician. So he ain't gonna go no further, man. Listen, it's, it's, he's saying exactly what I've been saying and others been saying for a while. Okay, Bitcoin, listen, man, it, it is what it is. It's had its time, but if we look at it strictly from the point of view of, of technology, it ain't the future, all right? And we know what the agenda is, all right? We know that the winners have already been chosen, and you see the the head of Algo, the inventor or the the guy who set up Algo, he knows, man. Right? If you listen to what he's been saying here, he knows exactly what's about to go down, man. So you you got to get yourself in position, man, for when when this stuff goes down. Because once they flip that switch, man, and these uh, different blockchains that are chosen start being adopted in the mainstream on mass, boy, <laughs> moon shot. That's all I got to say. But yeah, this is a good article, man. No doubt, I'll put it in the description box. It's a very very good article. You know, that's why you gotta be bullish on Algo, man. This guy knows what he's doing. So with that, you know, okay, I'm gonna be a man. Thanks for liking the video, subscribing, and sharing. I'm out.